What's up YouTube, it's your old school expert and today we're doing the Invasion of Chaos 25th Anniversary Edition Booster Box. Let's get right into this. Um, I think I would like to hypothesize a little bit here. Let's talk about what might be the best box possible and the worst box possible. I think the best box possible is pretty obvious. You get the Chaos Emperor Dragon, you get the Blacklist or yeah, Blackluster Soldier Envoy at the beginning, and then you get the um, Dark Magician of Chaos. I think that would be kind of your perfect scenario. Obviously, that's extremely unlikely to happen, although I'm sure there are boxes out there that have been like that. So, I would say the worst possible box, I, I gotta say, it's probably like Dark Mirror Force with like Guardian Angel Joan or something. Um, two cards that just you know, didn't have much of an anime presence. Um, didn't have really any competitive play at all ever, so like the nostalgia factor is just not really there. Um, so that would be, I think that'd be my worst box. Uh, there, this set is so hit or miss, um, but I think there are a few middle ground cards like um, the Dedalus and um, like Black Tyranno. I think they're cool. They're not like value cards or anything, and they're not like crazy nostalgic, but I do think they're really cool. I think the artwork on them is fantastic. So. Those are some of the cards I wouldn't really mind pulling too much. Um, obviously, Chaos Emperor Dragon is what we would hope for with the secret, but <clears throat> I've always thought that um, Invader Darkness is kind of an underrated card. So let's get right into it. We got Dedication Through Light and Darkness. Maybe that's a good sign for the Chaos stuff that might come out of this set. Cool, starting off strong with a nice super rare. I have to say that's probably one of the better super rares. I do really like this card. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more so you guys can see that better. So. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, Dedication to Light and Darkness, I forgot exactly what this does. Tribute one Dark Magician, Special Summon one Dark Magician of Chaos from your deck. Uh, oh, sorry, Hand Deck or Graveyard. It's a little, little thing on the sleeve there, but yeah, that's a, I mean, not a card that was ever competitive. Um, I think I graded one of those, PSA 10, and sold it. I never really, um, kept the supers that I graded, I always sold those off, because I was really just interested in the ultras. Suzuki Samurai number three. Yeah, Manju of the 10,000 hands, probably the best common out of this set. Um, it's always held some value because it's always been one of the better ritual-based cards. It's, it's such a good searcher. Um, it's just so generic. It's such an easy thing to do. You just <clears throat> It takes up your normal summon, but there's no real um, cost outside of that. So we've got a compulsory evacuation device. This should have been an ultra rare, 100%. That should have been an ultra rare. Instead of Dark Mirror Force, which easily could have been a common just based on how terrible that card is. I mean, I'm probably going to pull it now that I'm talking trash about it, but that card is awful. I always thought it was so ridiculous. I forgot Chaos Sorcerer. Ultra Evolution Pill. So yeah, um, a lot of cool Go Format cards in here. We've got the Chaos Sorcerers and, you know, Compulsory and, of course, uh, BLS and stuff like that, so... It's a really good set. We all know. Oh, and there it is. That was early. Chaos Emperor Dragon Envoy of the End. We did pull the better secret. Although, again, I love Invader of Darkness. I think it's a super underrated secret rare. One of just a couple secret rares I feel is really kind of underrated in the older sets. So, let's leave that up. That is beautiful. Um, It should be the errata, right? Yeah, because it says GY, so, um, yeah. Yeah, you can't activate other cards or effects during the turn you activate this card's effect. So um, that kind of eliminated the, um, like, this, you could have Sangan on the field and, you know, search for Yada and stuff. I think that circumvents that kind of thing. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know the rulings too well, but... Chain Disappearance, that was actually, that card saw a lot of play back in like 2011, 12, somewhere around there. Um, that was used quite a bit just to weed out your opponent's uh, extra copies of cards that they were running. Uh, Ryo Koki's a really cool zombie card. This, I, I'm glad they made it a super rare in, I think, one of the Dark Revelations. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was the Dark Revelation 2 or something. They made this a super rare. I have a few copies of it. I think it's a beautiful card in super rare. The foil looks amazing. This definitely should have been a foil. I don't know why this was a common. Mad Dog of Darkness, and then we got a DD Designator. So another super. I think um, Smashing Ground, I don't know if I've seen one yet, but I think Smashing Ground came in... Invasion of Chaos as well. 
That was a really good card, kind of a staple for a while there. It's just so useful, uh, especially when the ban list came out. We got a uh, Fuma Shuriken. So yeah, when the ban list came out, it really, uh, you know, it obviously nuked uh, Regeki. Um, eventually Dark Hole made its way to the ban list. Um, I want to say Mirror Force might have been on the first one. Uh, another Getsu Fuji, uh, Fuhima. I never really paid attention to that card, but yeah. Got the Ojamas in this set too. I mean, I think the Ojamas were first, I think they first appeared in Dark Crisis, but um, yeah, I always thought they were pretty, pretty weird, pretty ugly. Zero Gravity, Lakunga. Um, but yeah, a lot of good commons in this set. Uh, a lot of burn stuff, like Balloon Lizard, I think is a, this is a burn, right? Yeah, put one kind of, yeah, so Balloon Lizard was, I remember running that in like a fun deck that I had, it was a burn deck, and then of course uh, Stealth Bird comes in this. Stealth Bird was like, back in the day, that was like a like a $1 common, It was which was a lot for commons back then. And we got an Insect Princess, all right, so there we go. Not, not too strong on the Ultras. It seems like with these boxes, if I get a good secret, I get really terrible Ultras, and uh, in the boxes that I've gotten good Ultras, I've gotten the not so desirable secrets, so... That's interesting the way that has worked out so far, but I'm not complaining. I love the artwork on Insect Princess. I think it's a beautiful card. It looks really nice. I love the colors. Um, it looks a little nicer on the original one, but this one doesn't look too bad. Does not look too bad. So that's the Ultra for the right side. This should be pretty much nothing. There's that Smashing Ground we are talking about. Oh yeah, Berserk Gorilla. I forgot that was in here too. So I want to say that was the first... 2000 attacker that didn't have like a terrible debilitating effect. I mean, its effect isn't helpful to it if it gets so it has to attack each turn and then if it goes to defense position ever, then it's just destroyed automatically. But those aren't terrible effects to have when when you've got a 2000 attack beater and that's the easiest 2000 attacker to summon. So, um, and then it's earth, so it goes with like gigantes and the earth, the whole earth thing. So, this is actually a really good card when it came out. Um, some Go format decks use it, or some Go beat decks that use it. I always thought it was a really cool card. Lakunga again, and we got a Trap Jammer, so I like the worst super in the whole set, but it's okay, it's gonna happen. We got probably my favorite super, which was the Dedication Through Light and Darkness, so I'm good with the supers. I don't, we're really just hoping for a better Ultra. Um, not a dark mirror force, but, uh, I mean, I, like I said, I'll take that insect princess. I think it's a cool card. It's it, nothing that like anybody ever used. Oh, dark I was like, where's the rare? Um, I don't think I ever saw it used competitively in any deck. I'm sure Weevil Underwood would appreciate it, but your average player did not care. Mataza the Zapper, that's a cool card back in the day too. Yeah. No one cared about Insect Princess when this set came out. It was all about the chaos. That was literally it. It was just all about the chaos. It's all everybody uh, cared about. It kind of sucked because like, it's the first set that came out where it kind of morphed everything. It was an overpowered set and archetype. So just, if you weren't running some version of chaos, there's a little bit of differentiation between chaos decks, but most chaos decks were like 90% the same thing. Um, you just weren't competitive if you, if you weren't running them. And that hadn't, hadn't really happened at that point. There was, believe it or not, a decent amount of variation in the old days. And we got a Enraged Battle Ox, which was one of the original piercers. I think the first piercer was um, Mad Sword Beast in Pharaoh's Servant. Remember, that was the first that I remember ever seeing, having the effect that it pierces through a defensive card. So we got an Orca Mega Fortress of Darkness. It's kind of a cool super little Mako Tsunami action. I always like Mako Tsunami, that whole like duel against Yugi. Um, that, was a, that was a cool moment. I think we all pretty much, everybody who watched the anime definitely remembers that episode. Um, and then he kind of became a, a, reappearing, a reappearing character here and there. So we got Stray Lambs. All right, we still have an Ultra. There's one, two, three, four. So we have four packs left. So looking for that ultra on the left side, it could be 
a black lesser soldier it could be a dark magician of chaos it also could be a dark mirror force so let's not will that into uh existence okay that's not it got the curse of darkness three packs three packs and we already got the secret so that's good we got the good secrets so that's good lots of good this might be it this might be it burning algae no Drilago. okay Two packs, two packs, let's see. Can we feel it? Can we, can we, uh, honestly, they feel exactly the same. I'm gonna say this is it, so open this, but they, they feel the same. And I think this is it. Hey, you know what? It's down to the last pack. If this is not an ultra, this would be the first box that didn't have the standard ratio. One secret, two ultras, four supers. So here we go. Invasion of Chaos, 25th anniversary. Should be an ultra rare in this pack. Let's see if I get a an unlucky box in that regard. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Does it look like it's a hot? I don't know. I don't know if they, yeah, it kind of does. I guess they still do kind of uh, bend like that. So we've got the Balloon Lizard, Soul Absorption, Earth Chant. I don't even remember this card. Like, I, I honestly did not know that was an Invasion of Chaos. Prickle Fairy. we got Robin, Zombie. All right, at least it's a monster. Oh, it's, it's a Strike Ninja. That's an S, isn't it? Yep, it's a Strike Ninja. All right, that's another not-so-great Ultra. But that's all right. I mean, it's like it is what it is. Like I said, there's a lot of mid-ground cards. Like, I would consider this a mid-ground. Like, it's not great. It's not one of the really awesome cards it's not one of the terrible like nobody really wants ultras either it's kind of cool um it's seen some play throughout history in Yu-Gi-Oh! um in the competitive scene never like a, a top um performer like it was never the ninja decks were never like amazing but it has you know it has ha had its moments in competitive play so let's do a quick recap um that box could have been a lot better but it certainly could have been worse too so definitely shouldn't complain i mean i'm 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 glad i'm fortunate to be able to even afford to buy a box um so i always got to keep that in mind so we got a orca mega fortress of darkness trap jammer dd designator dedication through light and darkness such a cool card really cool artwork you got like the democ looking dude there uh insect princess we always pull this i don't know if you guys have seen any of my old videos you know we always pull this. I've pulled like at least three of these, the first edition ones on my channel. So go and watch those videos, it's crazy. I always pull this card. So I pretty much knew it was gonna happen, but yeah. And then we got a Strike Ninja, which I don't pull very often, so that's all right. And then a Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy of the End. That's nice, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful card. So that made up for the, for the other kind of mediocre pulls. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope this was a nice little trip down uh, memory lane for you guys. It certainly was for me. And as always, stay tuned for more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! videos.